Hello friends, welcome to Intuits. Let's begin the class. Okay, all right. So let's uh, discuss today quite important thing. How we can secure access of the jewel data list. This is the agenda today. So how we can secure it? What does it mean? So let's take an example of the steps to access to data link storage using an access case. Right. So you have created access keys, right? Upper case in the storage. And this is your your storage account. And this is your completely you are hard coding the keys here. So what does it mean? If somebody have access this uh, this notebook, he can access this keys and he can utilize it, right? In the data without that. So this is not a secret way to give your keys like this, hard coded. So we will see how we can secure this access and we will not directly hard coded this access keys directly like this. Okay? Instead of that, we will use something to secure it. And that's the way it works. Okay. So basically, when you are talking about your securing the access, there are two things to be in. First is your database, data break, sorry, secrets. Scope, I will discuss for how we can do that, all these things. Plus, we will use a another what do you call it, utility from the Azure portal to X to secure that. Just like we use the Azure data like storage to keep the items there, no, like that. We we'll use another important uh, utility from the Azure that will be helped to secure the thing that is called Azure. But this one we will use it. So we will secure it. Plus the database secret scope, and it will make your uh, the keys, whatever you are using it, to make them secure. Okay. So what is a secret exactly? Okay. Secret is something like I literally answer that question. So secret is something like is a container or is a mm, what do you call? It? It's it's like a it's, it's like a container where you can store your credentials, your uh, details, everything you can store inside that. And after that, whenever it is required, you can access through the different functions or different things in the country attached to any something like that. You are okay. Instead of writing hard coding, you will store there. So now here, if I talked about the first scope of a, up to here, any questions? What I would discuss? No. Okay. So there are two types of database secret scope is this. So the first one is. Um, Data breaks act secret scope. Secret scope. This is more of a programmatical way. Okay. It is like a using your command line interface. You like to write the code for this to how to get the secret scope. Okay. Or even the API calls. You need to use some API calls, the CLI calls to work on this one. Okay, uh, this is not that much of a requirement because this is more of a more of a uh, again it comes to the admin subs. But this is I I never saw this way to create the secrets. But I will tell you another way to do that from the UI itself. I think you should follow that. Okay. The second. Uh, one I should is, uh, could you please keep your mic uh, next to you? Like uh, we are hearing it. Uh, it is a little low voice. Is this for everybody? No, for me it's okay. Huh. Before before jumping into that, it says you know, like a uh, request to everybody that whatever you have doubt, are you discussing it among yourself first? Because I'm talking about Anita, you. SQL, if you have any doubt, okay, before uh, like putting into the WhatsApp, you have a very good resource with the Morgan. So he is a quite senior most on the SQL. I can say. You can take 101 with him, even Jaya, or whoever is there. Just discuss with them for super internet because you are you guys are the, as a team or what? What exactly then? Before stopping there, anyone asking me, this is how you can do that. Did you ever try that before posting the questions? I'm not like, pointing out anything, but please do that. Like interact with the members on this forum because they have some experience. And if you guys not Come out with the solution, then come to me. I will do that. Okay. Okay, Samir. Sure. Let, uh, utilize yourself. It's better. Yeah, right? you can have a more interaction. More questions will come. Are you guys are talking? Call or no? Or 
You guys are working on silos only or never? Uh, no, Samir. Actually, if some, okay, we are working. But, okay, especially I remember last time Jaya asked some question I answered or something. But, hmm. okay, if you have one-to-one call, a text might be sometime during office hour, text will be a little tricky one. Mm-hmm. Maybe mm-hmm. after office hour, six or after 5.30 or 6, so some 30 minutes also we can discuss. Anybody, okay, right. I'm available. Right. If anybody call or something before, like I send a question, so I will help you. I will go through and then I will help you. Okay. Thanks. I don't, uh, Thanks. Thanks. That's what I'm saying. You guys talk some time or you guys have to have six or seven members are there. Please set up some time on the weekend for a 30 minutes, whatever new time frame is there. Talk through it, like how you are preparing yourself, what is the lag, where you are lagging, all this stuff because you guys are a team, right? You should help each other, first of all. Like where you are lagging, how things I can finalize or what I can do now. All these things, please discuss. I would suggest. Take your time, anytime. It could be weekend or some based on off all your availability. Just to set up a time, meet there because Google Meet also is available. You can go there, meet, discuss for 30 minutes at least. Top it. It's not for every week, maybe once in a, like 15 days. You can do that. Okay. It's up to you guys how you want to manage yourself. All right. Make sense? Yes, Samir. Yes, Samir. Yeah, don't work on Silas. Never. That is not at all good. Okay, anyway. So now the second point is Azure Key Bond Pack Secrets. So we will see the second approach, how you can do that. And the first approach also I will show you, but not right now because this is due to be a different tricky situation, like you to write some different kinds of code. But we will see it. I will put it in a in the backlog right now for this but we'll see that don't worry so first the first one okay so we will see the second approach as your keyboard secrets code for this uh, the high level steps i will see high level steps what exactly we need to do for this okay so the first high level step step is first of all create your secrets it's on azure keyboard we'll see one by one. Second, first we will create the secrets on the uh, in the Azure keyboard. Then create data breaks secret scope. Okay. Then attached to notebook. Okay. Clusters, etc. So this is the way we will see. Okay. So this is the way we can create some secrets. So let's see. How to create the secrets on the Azure keyboard first, then create the database secrets. I'll tell you. First, let's go to the Azure portal and search for key vaults. So it will be a one utility will be there. But this, this is called the Azure keyboards. So click on this keyboards. Okay, there will be no keyboards available. Just create, create it. Do we create these keyboards, uh, Samir, in real time? Maybe it will be there for you. But uh, but you should okay. know the name, okay. and sometimes you can create a yourself. And few few things sometimes the keyboard also already present. So now uh, we are going with the this approach. We know that so the subscription resource group will be the same, okay. Doesn't matter what exactly here we are doing it. Okay. Now uh, now let's name it, okay. So let's say project. Project I'm just giving a name project access keys. Okay. No. Let's select the region and pricing tier. I will go with the standard as of now. The standard is fine, but you can go for a premium if you are one working on a real time scenario. That is fine, but let's go with the standard. That is fine for me. And uh, this will be uh, deleted in the last 90 days. Again, you need to create it. So, that creation of uh, actually uh, like. 
the same time it will be written after 90 days, right? So we will say that, so like how I, how we can manage it. Like so 90 days, again you need to commit and you need to uh, again create it. No, that's what the, this option will come. Like there is a uh, programmatical way for this, right? They can work, uh, they can create some script. Like whenever the 90 days got deleted, it will automatically create something for you again. Okay? And it will place it to different notes. So those are the programmatical approach. Uh, we will see few of them, but uh, it's it's not like we need to write everything on the programmatical way. But sometimes we will do the thing by way as well. Okay. Now let's create it, uh, review and create. That's it. Let me copy this name. And I'll keep it somewhere. Review and create. Create. It is going on. Let me put the name. This is mine. Manage your keyboard. Name. Okay. Let it be. Okay. Now go to resource. Now here, this is the container. I can say this is the area where you can create your secrets and where you can keep your passwords and everything there. Okay. So now let's go to my secret and click on generate and import. okay click on the generate and import let's go with the manual approach you can have you can have a certificate way as well sometimes what happens is there are some certification will be there in the real time where all the keys all the things will be available that you can use it your certification and you can upload the certificate so that everything will be comes under that. This is also one more way to do it. But in here we don't have any certificate. So let's go with the manual approach here. And uh, let's cancel it. And let's create again. Okay. Now we need to give the name. Then we need to say the secret value and the content type. We'll see that. So what exactly we need to do that for? So here uh, project fixing speed. So the name I'm giving is that practice. This is the name I'm giving. Okay. And what is the secret value would be? That value would be let's duplicate this tab. And we need to go to our storage account. And this is the storage account we are working on, right? project EPI. and here how we can get the keys access keys on the storage hello guys i'm there hello am i audible yes Samir. yeah i've asked some question okay anyway the storage account i can click on that this keys then i can copy this access account or in my notebook on the first notebook where i'm saying that this is a storage using the access keys I have one access keys here also that I am using it right. So I will just copy this without the double quotes and copy it. I'll go to my secret and instead of this, I will put that. Okay. So this is the my the private access keys which I am created it that will hold this uh, the keys directly story in a secured way and the content type I will say. Just like a grouping, see the access keys. Enabled, created. What happened? What happened? It is not created. Why are you getting an error here? 
let's create one more tab so we put the One second, let me check it. Keyboards, I will go to my keyboard. Okay, now I will get my secrets here. It's ended and import. Practice. Tools. Okay, this is the name I've given and I'll copy this again. Place it here. This is my let's create this. Uh, or why it is throwing error? One second, I don't know. Uh, maybe You guys are there, right? Yes, Samir. Yes, Samir. Oh, sorry for that. Let me try one more time. I don't know why it is throwing error for me. It is not able to create it. An error is nothing. It is an error. Caller is not authorized to perform the action. The role as in the NASA computer was in the world. I am the owner only, right? I'm not, I don't want any permission here to create it at least. Hmm. This kind of thing is bad. Okay, let's just give me a second. This is cool. Okay. 
that we have to keep for that as well. Instead, uh, next user group select number. Select myself here. Select. This is something I'm doing a new thing. I don't know. Let's see who that. Okay, so what I did, I went to the key vault. Okay, then let's first create it. Then if it works, then I will. Okay, let's so let's practice. Access key. Let me copy this. Let's And the logical grouping is for this is called access key. Okay, and let's create it. Yeah, now it got created. Okay, so what was happening is uh, since I'm 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 the owner of this all the portal like whatever I'm using, but still it was not allowing. So what I did, I go to the uh, the, the the Azure keyboard, click on the access control. The IAM, how I did it in the service principle and everything, right? You remember? I went there, then I click on the add and role assignment and I assign myself as a Azure uh, Vault Key Administrator so that I can create my uh, account. So I'm, I'm now a keyboard administrator. So that after assigning myself, still I'm the owner, but it is still allowing me to do that. Then only I have created my secrets. So this is the secret name which I need to use it. Okay, so this is the use it. It's the important name. I will say it. So practice access keys. So this is the Azure keyboard keys which will hold that. So this is the first part is completed. So that we have created a secrets on the Azure keyboard. Now the second part is how we can enable the create database secret scope. Okay, so basically. Uh, normally in the Databricks area, right, you will not able to see the secrets directly. This is like a hidden page. So for that, you need to go to the first the home page of the Databricks. How you can go to the home page? Either you can click on the this Azure or you click on the Databricks. These two link will guide you to the your home page. So this is your home page here, okay? something like that. So here, if you see, uh, this is the URL, right? This is the URL you are talking about. Okay. So this is the onboarding page, whatever maybe. But here, after this, if I say, let's copy this and put it into my notepad, and then I will write something here. Okay. This is whatever the URL will come. You just put it like that. So instead of this, okay, I will say secrets. S E C R E T S. S should be capital. Okay. And this is the way. No, no, no sorry. Not small. This is small secrets. 
slash okay create scope okay create scope so here i think create okay, s should be capital something like that i think so like that we need to write it so here yeah. let me try it but i i am 100% sure that the s should be capital here. so we need to write something slash secrets slash create scope so c should be small and s should be capital after that go to your url and put it back okay if it is all wrong it will not throw in any not working so but let's try with c capital again enter it is not working so let's come back and maybe onboarding onboarding just hold on okay these are the things actually once time i have need to do it so maybe i am doing something wrong here so just give me a sec we are going to the onboarding page all right so maybe i'll write it let's slash create scope okay let's try this Never expected this. Oh. This is my URL. can be there huh? just hold on for a second let me check something and come back yeah that is the way only we need to create it as i have checked it the documentation as well uh, but i will, will try again just Maybe now we can try it out. I think that was a option was there. Let's try that now. On the end of the URL, let's try this. Yes, now it worked. Can you just check me for this? How to create scope in the database data breaks for me at least? Somebody create scope. Okay. Yeah, now it come. Yeah, don't know how 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 why it was not coming, but anyway. So you need to go to your home page and slash secrets s e c r e t s slash secrets slash create scope and c should be small and s should be capital. That's it in the create scope. Now on this one we need to create the scope. So we need to give a name to this. Okay, then I will do it. So I will say project hyphen scope. 
okay so this is the scope i am creating this i need to also copy paste here so this is my access keys and this is my scope and uh, my next principle let's go with the all users okay uh, but we can have a creator as well so that's it and uh, your azure key vault name you need to give this so this is uh, the value dns name and your resource id okay so two things i need to give it one is the dsn name one is resource id from where you will get it this so go to the azure key vault okay azure key vault here and this is my azure let's go there and this is my azure key vault here then click on the properties okay click on the properties then you will get two things here okay first is the vault url and one is the resource id so two things we need to copy it so first one is the dns name is the thing but is called the vault url so the first one copy it and put it here on the dns name and next one is the resource id copy it and put it here okay this is your resource id this is your vault id two things you have done now create it now your scope got defined now there is an interaction happened between your key vault to the data bricks happened now okay. now i will go to my workspace here and from the workspace and click on my project inputs and let's click on this okay so now let's try to use this feature so before to that i will show you something let's how you can access the secrets so we have a db utils right you are using db utils dot secrets okay secrets uh, Yes. Dot help. Let's use this function and run only the particular cells only. I just want to see what is available for me. Let's run this cell. Oh my God! Mm. This is the one more problem. We're stuck in so many things. Let me restart the. One second. Are you guys are following me what I am trying to do here? Yes, Let me start my cluster. So, uh, please make sure that whatever I am doing it right now, and previously whatever I done in interviews, now please do practice. Don't make it a backlog. Because whatever I am just teaching you, these are all fundamentals. I think from next classes or maybe next to next class, I will start the project. And so that we will use all the features there. I will use the storage mounting. All these steps I will use there directly. At that time, it should be in a position that you can understand that what exactly I am doing there. From there, we will start the sparks, ingestion, all these things and we will make it, make it as a project. Okay. So make sure that whatever you are practicing right now, it should be make sure on your top that you have done it. Okay. That's a request. And I'm not sure why there is just so silence today. What happened? Not able to understand. There are two things. Either you understand everything or you are not able to understand. Which one is that? Hmm? Which one that is? Hello? Yeah, Samir, this is completely different and new one. So it's taking time to understand. It's fine. So please practice. Mm, and nothing is, yeah. nothing big deal on this, okay? You can still do that. Okay, Samir. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Okay. Now my cluster got started. Now let's run this dbutils.secrets.help you can use the dbutils.fs.ls also use it, use it right to see the content of the content of the what is there in the azure storage right we are seeing on that particular container what is available you are using the dbutils.fs.ls like that so dbutils.secrets.help will show you let's run this here so it will give you some commands which can be used for getting the secrets 
So now we have the Azure Key Vault. Now that we have attached to the scope of the Databricks. Now we can use dbutils.secrets.cat get my this scope. Okay, so get that. So let's see. First, I will see mm -hmm. the list scope. Okay, so secrets dot list scopes. It will like this only that I will create another node. Okay, another says I will say dbutils dot secrets dot list scopes. Yeah, so like this dbutils. DB utils dot secret dot list scope and if you run this okay then it will give you your secret scope name. Yeah, this one you created right project scope. The scope which is currently available under the database. So this is the one it will give you that okay, these are the scopes which are available under this. You should know these commands, okay, because uh, might be sometimes you will not able to access the the, the database secret scope. So we can say that the debut is or secret or list scope. If you execute, it will show you all the secret scope which are available in the database. Okay, this is the first. Second, I will just go to the list. In the list, if you see, I have two parameters. First is the scope. Which scope you want to send? So this is the scope. I will send scope equals to in the double quote, I will say, sorry, single quote, I will say project underscore scope. Specifically, if you want to see what is available inside this particular scope, then you will see, you will use the list command. If you utilize dot secret dot list scope equals to this. Now run this. Permission denied. Saying that. Okay, let me try one more. Let's see. If not, I will check the permission again. So get and say scope equals to this and comma key equals to the key which you created it. Okay. So this is my project scope. Okay. Given the same name. One second, what is the name I given? One second. Project access keys. Project access keys. Project access keys. This is wrong. Sorry. Use this. Let's try it. And we will see if in permission error or something. Yeah, there is some permission error. It is saying that permission error. Okay. Let me check. So this could be some confusion for you guys. But this is the way you need to debug as well. So luckily it happens. So we need to do like that because in real time also we will we'll face that same problem. Okay. So I have this. Yes. Assignment. I have the keyboard administrator here, mm -hmm. but exactly we need to get that information. So we have a keyboard administrator at role assignment. Mm -hmm. What extra we need here? Monitor keyboard. Let's get the error. I'm saying that invalid permission is specified. Just to document. Order is not source. Okay. Let's see. They are all like I have given. Let's assign the keyboard contributor as well. See that. 
and these are the things we no need to do it in your here demo okay, don't worry but let's send that so now i have a keyboard administrator in the contributor as well and if i run this it will work there is some permission issue is there hmm. okay anyway i'll i'll cross check this before to the next class i know but what exactly i'm saying is that when you are using the secrets right so you are keeping the keys here so you will use this function that get and what is the scope the uh, the database scope and the key once you get that no that you can use this command instead of writing the hard coded value here okay instead of writing this you can replace this with this so what will happen is in the meantime whenever it is run it will go to the secrets and it will identify the scope of your databricks and whatever the key is available on your azure keyboard okay then it will it will just replace with that internal instead of writing the hard coding value here is the way we will do it. Okay, making sense what I'm trying to say. Permission denied error. I will see it, but instead of hard coding the value, we can use this dbutils.secrets.get instead of writing the hard coded. Making sense? Yes. The yes. And even mm -hmm. same you need to do for other workspaces as well. So here. Suppose I am going to let's say the service base version or the SaaS. Here also SaaS we have right. We have some tokens. This is the token. If you use it, this token also, is getting hard coded. Okay. Even if you go to your service principle, this all thing, the client ID, the tenant ID, the client secret, everything is hard coded. So all these three variables you can create inside your secrets, just like how you created the secrets for the access key, right? You can create the access for client ID, tenant ID, and client secret. After that, you can use that dbutils.secret.get that value like that. So instead of writing this, all these things will be created. Okay. So that I am giving exercise to you. You can do that. So. So before to that, if your uh, authorization is not coming, you are good. If it is authorization comes up, I will see that why the permission is getting denied. But end of the day, the thing is what I'm trying to say is that you should not use your direct methods of writing the access hard coded. Instead of that, you should use this is the way. Okay, making sense? Is it okay? Yes, sir. It is okay. Okay. So this is the way you should do it. Okay. So now, and uh, this you can use it in a cluster as well. So I showed you one way to write the clustered uh, authentication. Right. You can go to your compute and click on the your mm, this one and go to the advanced option. And you can write some code here as well, right? After editing, from the edit, and you can go to the advanced option, and you can write everything there, right? This one, I remember, I think I have given the cluster authentication. Yeah. Same thing, we can use it here as well. Okay, so the whatever you are using the DB utils dot get dot secret that is your keyboard that you can use it here as well. So that whenever you are restarting the cluster, automatically the secret will start up again. Automatically it will close. Now there is a permission denied error, so it will not work. Let me fix that, then I will show you this as well. What this is universal. Making sense? Is that making sense to you? Now the question here is that we have learned so many ways of accessing the keys. So we have learned the access keys. Azure Active Directory, Service Principle, SAS Token, in a clustered way as well. So seven types. Of 
Okay. Now which one you will use? None of them. Okay. If I say we learn all the six ways, then we are using none of them. Actually, in a real time project, we will not use all the six features. Okay. So instead of that, we will use another feature that and you just point what I'm writing, just make sure that you understand properly. So we will use two methods. Okay? One is the mounting. And second one, we will say unit camera. These are the latest trend which we will use or which we will find in the real time where you are accessing your edge storage. Okay. So first method is mounting. This is universal. Till 2022, this was the boss. Okay. And in 2022, Azure, Azure Databricks come up, comes up with another feature called Unity Catalog. Now, people have started using the Unity Catalog method to access the Azure storage into the Azure Databricks. Okay. But, 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 even this mounting and even this Unity Catalog are both are on the premium features. Okay. So, it means that my database is 100% on the premium. I can show you that all the features. But since you are working on a standard standard features, right? So, you are not able to do the mounting and you are not able to do the unity catalog. Okay. So, mounting, you just need to see it and how I am doing it. That you need to do it. And the same thing I will follow along with the project as well. But, since you are using the standard, right? So which authentication we will use it? I would say for you guys, for you all, please use service principle way on clusters directly. Please use this and offer the authentication. When the project got started, when I give the data set and everything, that time we will do, please use you used service principle on cluster rather than writing on things. And I will use the mounting method. I will show you so that you will get familiar with the, how the project works on the mounting method. And end of the course, I will show you the how to work on the unity pattern. Is it making sense? What I'm trying to say here? Yes. Getting right because these two are on the premium, so we are not able to use it directly. But you should know that by looking at the videos, like how it works, how to mounting and unmounting. Okay. Is it okay? What I'm trying to say? Yes, Samir. Everybody. Samir. Hmm. Go ahead. Tell me. Anything? Anything you are saying? No, all okay. It's okay, Samir. All okay. I'll look at it. Okay. Hmm. So now, normally, let's try to understand what is called the mounting. Mounting is something like let's understand the mount. This is you. I am hundred percent sure you will not be able to do it because you are not in a premium capacity. So, but you can just follow along that. So basically, what exactly the mounting is something like the Azure data bricks or the data bricks store. The file, whatever storage you are having, the storage in on the database, or you have a file system, whatever you upload there. When you are integrating to uh, the data bricks, right? You are or you are uh, interacting to, uh, between the storage and the data bricks. That stores the data in the form of a DBFS. This is called distributed or data bricks file system. Distributed file system, or I can say Databricks file system, anything that's fine. So, Databricks file system. Okay. And uh, it will store default as, as blob storage. The container was blob. And it will store the data in the form of a blob storage. Okay. That is called 
db f s root okay for this root and all we'll see now let me show you uh, by creating a note notebook that's it let me create a notebook and the notebook name is I'm saying explore dbfs ok so if I say db utils the one which you are using dot fs dot ls ok and if I give the root root means this is the root ok root files if I run this it will give you some path ok so these are the different contents available on my current root ok so if I say and if I wrap this inside your display command then it will give you exactly what exactly is available in data frame we uh, if you see there are different paths one is dbfs volume data fix data sales results all these are available inside the root folder of the database dbfs when you have created something database automatically the root folder will be get created and these are the mount points which are available inside your inside your the root folder okay and normally uh, the dbfs if you put the data okay, there will be no dbfs nothing will be there automatically so we need to enable the dbfs settings into our account so how we can do it so on my profile right if i go to my admin settings rather than the user settings if i go to my admin settings here and under the workspace setting, uh, I should have an option that is called DBFS file. So, let's check it out for me. DBFS. This is how it is getting changed. Mm. Yes, see. DBFS file browser. This option is normally it will be like a uh, in a disabled state okay, always now i can enable this the wordpress file browser now it's enabled on my on my admin settings okay now if i click on the data this option okay, now i will get an option if i click on the add here then add data i can get some option One second, let me check one more time. One second, one second. Now, if I do it. Amir, uh, for that stored key value, right? For mm -hmm. that, instead of the generating the random value, we can directly enter the password. We can enter the password kind of, right? We can give our own value. Instead of generating from the access key, mm -hmm. we can give own right own in the sense own in the sense like i can give say how we are setting up the normal password for the windows and all right like that we can give the key right no 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 actually we are storing the password for the storage so when you creating a storage right mm -hmm. so it is generating some random access keys for you right yeah that's that, that 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 we're storing inside the keyboard Okay, no, no, that's a question. Instead of generating it, so I can give mm. man, I can enter the key, right? Instead no, of no, generating no. it. No, oh, no, it's it's when not. you are, no, ah. when you are creating the storage, mm -hmm. automatically two access key or two auto generated. That's okay, a, this, so once it is auto, people. yeah, it is now it's auto generated, right? I can mm. change this value, right? You can rotate, you can rotate and you can ah. change it. 
we can't enter your own password oh it's i not cannot like enter password. i thought of my question is that's mm. the thing okay see you once mm. it is generated okay we are copying from here to we are pasting into another place instead of that i can enter the new different value which is my easy to remember me so no, i can no, no. copy paste that value to another place that's okay no 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 that's because oh. the password which you are giving it that could be not encrypted if you see here this is a 32 bit yeah something. that is oh, okay that's good yeah so that's what the security wise they will generate for you okay okay got and it okay the, and even the client the service principal way as well if you go to azure mm -hmm. directory create the service mm -hmm. principal that client id the secret id all these things which will auto generate okay, you can't it. you can't enter your name there you can't put your name mm, okay got it okay thanks yeah 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 so this is one more and it is enabled So now just give me a second. I'm setting option to save it here. No, I don't have an option. So uh, refresh the image needs to take a bit. Okay. Let me refresh it. And I'll say yeah, now it is enabled. Now let's put the data button here. And if you see here, once that got option got enabled, you'll have an option called browse DVP. This option is normally will be not available in the data unless until if you go to the admin setting and enable that option. What is the advantage of this? Now, if I click on the browse DVFS, okay, now you can upload the file. Okay, click on the upload, you can upload your file from your system, okay, in your system or something, whatever, okay, so I will show you that, don't worry, but the, this is the file or this is the, uh, what do you call, if you are something, you are, you have a storage and there are some files are available and you want to, when you are interacting with the Azure Data Bricks, everything will be stored inside the file store okay that is the root there you can create your own folders and you can store it but ultimately it will store inside your file store room so that's what is called the and the file mechanism which will be used to store the data is called your dbfs data breaks file system okay this is very important to understand the mount principle because tomorrow when i will show you the mount Okay, then you should understand this why it is DVFS is very much required. And whatever I will show you tomorrow, please uh, go along with your videos and make it as a note in your class, in your whatever you are doing in the rough notebook or wherever you are doing the notes, because you will not able to perform this activity on a plan. And this is whatever I show you tomorrow. That is the way the project work in real time. Now it's 80%, 95% because the new features also came up. That is called the Unity Cat. That is the they are migrating to that. That also I will show you on the end of the course. Okay. So I think I am done for today.